Hello everyone! Today I want to talk about how you can monitor the PLC variables uh, using uh, Control Experts uh, animation table. So I got a I got a PLC program here that I created. Uh, it's got nothing fancy. It's, it's got the hot standby CPU with power supply and two NOC card or Ethernet card. And it also has a remote I.O. Uh, with two power supply, uh, communication module, communicating module, uh, analog input, two analog inputs, and one DI, a digital input. So all that uh, will create these variables. I have also went ahead and create uh, a couple of real variable. I'm going to add one uh, boolean as well here, right here. Just for the sake of an example. Okay, so uh, if you want to monitor during runtime, all these variables will have uh, will have values uh, on this column here. So in order to monitor that, what they have in the world of control export is they got the thing called animation table. So if you right click this guy here, you say add new animation, and you give it a name called uh, monitoring. Okay, and then after that, you create a table, and then from here you double click this guy, click the epsilon button here, three dots here, and then you select the variable that you want. Just have to clear my filter here, and like that. Now, you, when uh, when the PLC is running, you'll be able to see the values in here. You will not be able to see any values in here. I'm not too sure why, but the uh, monitor uh, animation table, you will be able to see the values in here. Say like, for example, if you want to add uh, more than, um, Say for example, if you want to not only monitor real one, you want to monitor real two and boolean. What you do is that you go uh, here, click on the epsilon button here, and then you click real two and boolean. Sorry, what you do is you click real two and hold control and click on the boolean. So you can actually click on multiple different variables all of, all across the location. So another way you can actually do a selection is you click on this guy here. Let's say if you want to select the whole thing. So you click the very first one or somewhere in between and you hold shift and you click whichever location you want to select and you hit OK and you'll start to add all those things. Any any variables that's already in this list will not be uh, will also be repeated. I'm sorry. So just be aware of that. So uh, this is this is one way to do it uh, to monitor your tag. So another way to monitor your tag uh, would be a more of a temporary this one here, when you do this, is a permanent solution. Well, what I mean by that is that it stays there. Uh, a temporary solution would be like, for example, if you now you're looking at uh, a data table, a data editor. So if you right click this guy here and you hit initialize animation table, it will create a new animation table for you with the name data editor. Right. So if you go, go ahead and uh, uh, click some more what, and initialize uh, animation table, it will keep adding that variable on the same table right you can see it here right click uh, it just keeps adding on the same location so if you want to start a new uh, completely new table you just go right click and you go new animation table it creates a brand new animation table new table right um, as you can see uh, the icons are a bit different on the side here like I said, this is a permanent one and this is a temporary one. So the permanent one, when you save this thing, uh, save this project, I'm going to save it here, save as. Um, desktop. Sure, let's save it, override this guy here. So if you save it and when you open the next time round, this particular animation table will, will still be there, but the remaining three of them will disappear. All this will disappear. Let me demonstrate. So if I close this guy here, okay, and if I open the same uh, project again, you'll see that on your animation table you only have one entry and the remaining three had disappeared. So you can see that, right? So, um, so how do you how do you make it permanent? Let's say, for example, you have worked through all those things, right? Whatever you want, and then you right click, you add initialize table, and then uh, you look at your a variable list and you say, I want this too as well, right click, and you hit add table. 
and you have built a very nice table and you want to convert it into a permanent table, what you do is that you right click this guy here and you go property and you make it a permanent. And it's advisable to give it a name. And then hit OK. And you can see, you'll notice that the icon will change from a dotted icon to a solid icon. So if I were to save this now, and if I were to close this project here, and try to reopen it after it closes, you'll see two entries of your uh, animation table. Opening the program again. Okay. And now you'll see two entries. That's how you make it permanent. Um, another way to uh, juggle around with this thing is that uh, you can actually reorganize this animation table. You can, if you like this animation, uh, uh, sign at test animation to be on top of monitoring, you just click it and hold it and then you drag it. And you can actually organize it in different way. Same goes for, let's say, a temporary table. Right click, new table. You can actually organize it whichever way you want. And then if you like it so much, you can go ahead and make it permanent. Like that. Right. Okay, I've covered most portion of the animation table in that aspects. So uh, as you know, uh, if you go right here, I demonstrated this multiple times. If you right click, uh, it will create, you hit initialize animation table. You know, it will just keep adding that uh, into the same table over and over again. It's gonna close this thing here. So if you're going back again into your, uh, Variable here. I'm gonna open up more variables here. If we go and add more variable, you will add on the same table. But let's say, for example, if you have a program, and you're in, in this program here, you're using two variables here. If you right-click this variable and you do initialize table, you'll notice that uh, it will not add on a table data editor. It will create a brand new brand new table with uh, the name of the program. Watch this. Look at that table with the name of the program, right? But, and then if you go back here again, and you go right click on real two now, it will add on this one rather than this one. That's how they divide themselves uh, accordingly. So if you right click this guy here, uh, add animation table, you can see that they're adding it onto this table instead of this. So what I'm getting at is that, that when you create a permanent table uh, and you say initialize, uh, I'm sorry, go back here, initialize, uh, animation table, it doesn't mean that it'll go up to a particular table, it goes to the table that it's meant for, right? So that's how they divide it that way. Um, and again, you can go in here and go properties, like the other ways, you can actually make it into a permanent, uh, permanent table here. Hit save, now it's permanent. So when you close the program, I'm going to save it here, and when you close the program and you open it again, You'll have four tables now, and the uh, the table called uh, the table called uh, table data editor will be gone. So instead of five, you'll have four tables left on your project on the animation table. There you go. Well, I hope this small little tip on uh, animation tables will help you monitor your variables. Anyway, have a good day.